into state active duty members of the National Guard under the following circumstances. Number one, in the case of war, insurrection, rebellion, riot, invasion, terrorism, blah, blah, blah. Number two, in the event of public disaster resulting from floods, fires, tornadoes, or other natural disaster. Number three, if the governor declares a state of emergency, emergency relating to public health. Number four, in order to assess damage or potential, or potential damage and to recommend responsive action as a result of an event in the listed in subs one to three that I just read, and here's the, here's the important one for me. Number five, upon application of any marshal of the United States, the president of any village, the mayor of any city, the chairperson of any town, or any sheriff in the state, so I do have the authority to call the governor and uh, request those resources. I did it because we were, like I said, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. All right, I can't guarantee what's going to happen tonight, but I said we cannot have a repeat. Now, you call well, just, just hold on. Um, <clears throat> so knowing these resources, and th to answer your question directly, they're not... The military does not perform a law enforcement function. Okay, the military acts as a false force multiplier to certain things that the general, General Dunbar, will determine. I stay out of all that. But you gotta have them ready. That's why I point out to Ferguson, the mayor made the call, the governor get the National Guard, it never came. That's their problem. In Baltimore, they decided they didn't need the National Guard. I'm one of those better safe than sorry. You are better off having the resources at the ready, okay? Deployment is up to the general. I get that part. I was wondering though, once they're in deploy, once they're in position, who will say, I need them now at such and such corner? Is that your call? Is that the mayor's call? Is that the police chief's call? Uh, either. Either. So you, you called the mayor, uh, you called the governor first and then the mayor? Um, why that order? Why didn't you consult with the mayor to see if he thought that this was needed? First of all, I don't take orders from the mayor. I wasn't going to call the mayor to see if it was needed. That's why I read, I have a responsibility here. Okay? I make the decision as to what I think my officers need, not somebody else do you think you need them. Okay? And under the statute here, under number five that I just read, sheriff, any sheriff in the state can call the governor under number one, the governor may order, blah, blah, blah. And I did that. Okay? Uh, when I talked to the governor this morning, I was a little surprised, but maybe I shouldn't have been. Uh, he had not heard from the mayor. I was surprised at that. But that's between those two. Uh, and then uh, I called General Dunbar and said I've spoken to the governor. I, you've got to keep these people in the loop. The statute's clear. It says you've got to inform the governor. The governor makes the decision whether these forces are going to uh, mobilize. And all that means is they go to their armories and they start getting their equipment. That's all it means. And they're on standby. All right. And if this thing goes to crap, like in Ferguson or Baltimore, then we would start making requests because the resources can't handle it. And then they would deploy under the general's orders in a, in a fashion that's conducive for what soldiers do, and it's not law enforcement. Okay. So that's something that's worked out with the general. Right? He's a bright guy, he understands military command and uh, the purpose of the military, and we're getting way ahead of ourselves. All right? I want redundancy in these resources. So I got my on-duty personnel. It's one layer. I've called up every off-duty deputy and said, get in here. Suit up, get in here. It's a redundancy, another layer. Okay? We'll extend shifts if we have to. That's another layer. Um, and then the National Guard resources is another, but you see that's way out there. So, you know, don't get all hung up on that. I just, I'm not going to get caught like Ferguson in Baltimore. Not going to happen. Because you all will stand up here and rightfully so and say, Sir, doesn't seem like you guys had, were prepared for this and then what am I going to say? So as you look at the plan between what you have with what Milwaukee police have with what the, uh, the National Guard has deployed, I think the police chief said he's going to have 150 officers available tonight. Do you think there's enough in position 
to keep the city safe? I don't know. You know, you, 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 you make estimates based on, some of it's based on what happened last night, but if you had what you had last night, you're going to end up with the same result. So I don't know how they came up with the number of 150. I'm not saying it is or isn't, but if, it is, if it's not, guess what? i got some reinforcements. All my off-duty people are in place. So it's, it's about being prepared for the worst. You hope for the best. Hope's not a plan. You prepare for the worst. And if you never need all these, fantastic. I'm going to be Baltimore first. Sheriff, have you been um, in direct contact with Chief Flynn yet no. today? No. Uh, my inspector, through the uh, uh, our point person, Captain Colin Briggs, that's where those discussions take place. The, the mayor said early at his news conference that the police chief would decide if the National Guard troops were needed. Is he not the only one who has that ability to decide that? I don't want to get into what, what, what the mayor is saying or, or isn't saying. I know what my authority is, okay? under the statutes, and he could say on behalf of the Milwaukee Police Department of the city, the chief will make that decision. I make it on behalf of the county, and, and if you go back to what the state statutes say, it's pretty clear. It's clear to me. It's been clear to me for the last uh, 14, year, 14 years. The sheriff has the power and the duty to enforce state statutes throughout the county regardless of municipal boundaries. It goes on to say, the sheriff, his or her deputies have countywide jurisdiction. Uh, the sheriff has very broad overall powers with respect to law enforcement. Very broad. And it says involving statutes, county ordinances, and general keeping of the peace in the county, regardless of municipal boundaries. The sheriff can, on a case-by-case -case basis, assert leadership, control, and direction. The state statutes tell me what to do. David Clark doesn't tell me what to do. Guided by the state statutes, attorney general decisions, state constitution, talks about the authority of the sheriff. So I'm just reading you what this says. Uh, the sheriff can, on a case-by-case -case basis, assert leadership, control, and direction by reason of his superior position as a law enforcement officer of the county. It is the duty of local police officers to cooperate. This is not a power struggle. I don't care what Barrett and Flynn want to do, but if I think something needs to be done, I don't need to call them. All right, there'll be some communication between these folks on the ground but if I am getting briefed like I was last night, and at some point I go, that's it, we got to go to plan B, I will inform those other players that I'm making this call, but I'm making under what I just read to you. So if it gets as bad as it was last night, the National Guard will be needed. <clears throat> I don't know. What's the threshold? I don't know. What's your... Because we have things in place now with redundancy we didn't have last night. That's why I made the call this morning... Inspector Swin, I said, call every off-duty deputy in. We didn't have that last night. So we may not even get to that fourth layer. How many deputies? Because we have, but we may. And, and, and what if we did and we didn't have it? General Dun Dunbar has asked, he's begged, Sheriff, we are not the Minutemen. If you think you need us, let us know ahead of time so we, we can at least mobilize. These are citizen, basically citizen soldiers, the National Guard. They have to come in from their jobs from their homes spread out all over the state to go to an armory to get their equipment. This stuff takes time. I can't have the city burning down while we're out of resources and we're still trying to mobilize. So this is insurance. That's all it is. This is insurance. And, and you know, for everybody to sit up and, well, at what point? I don't know. It's going to be based on the circumstances, you know, as they move forward. Can you tell us how many, is it every single deputy, um, how many, are, that's ready to go how many tonight? are on duty? We have 200 officers, all those that are not on regular duty have been called in. So we have all our court people. I, I'd say about 350. That's my total compliment. So how many are on duty tonight? 
150 from the city and how many from, from your... Oh, easily 100. Easily. And just to clarify on the National Guard, are they now in position? You said they're not Minutemen, they can't, you know, they don't move that quickly. Are they now in position ready if you need them? They have been, they have a rapid deployment for us, okay? They have been uh, ordered to the armory to start getting their stuff, their equipment together. Where they stage is up to the general. That's, uh, but if they're needed, they're in place. We saw uh, damage to uh, police cars. We saw uh, officers that were injured. Uh, what is the update on your situation in terms of squad cars or sheriff's deputies? Were there any injuries or any reports of damage? Uh, one squad car damaged. Pardon me? No injuries. Uh, like I said, but by the grace of God. And uh, I've made it clear too with my personnel. The worst visual on TV, because it undermines the confidence of the public that uh, you can get this thing under control, is to see one of your cars upside down, on fire, people dancing on it. And so part of my direct directive and my plan is we got to protect these assets. We need those things. I mean, even if not there last night, we need them today, we need them next week. And so really the equipment should be on the inner perimeter. I had a mobile jail out last night. I can't have that thing on fire. It's a mobile jail. It can hold up to 45 people. We can move it. They never make a five arrest. We can move it there, and, and we can secure them, and you can book them in there, and everything. And if, if we only have one in the count, can't have it destroyed. The same with our command post. That's where all of the major decisions are made. That's where we have uh, the multiple agency. You know, when you have an incident command system, you have commanders from different agencies. They sit in a command post so they can all communicate. It's a modern piece of equipment, uh, can monitor stuff in life, lifetime, satellite communications, and I can't have it destroyed. Okay, sure. So the, the, the protection of the, the equipment to me is, is, is key. I said preservation of life and property. Uh, earlier today we saw the news conference with the police chief and the mayor and uh, the Common Council president. You're having your news conference here today. Um, are you able to tell the public, though, that your department and police are working shoulder to shoulder in the field and uh, dealing with uh, whatever is in front of them and whatever the crisis might darn be? Right. You're darn right there. That is essential. Okay. Uh, that, the Squad 700 that I talked about, he's working in concert with the Milwaukee police on you know, in the field commanders. All right, there is a, uh, a unified command. Yeah, that <clears throat> has to happen. We know a lot of this happened because of social media and the urging of people to go in certain spots. Is there any sort of enforcement or monitoring of Facebook and Twitter and other social media sites? Done every, by you guys? Yes, every minute of every day. Uh, that's where we get some of this from. Uh, that is how they mobilize. Remember they were listening to our calls? Well, we listened to their calls too gives us some, sometimes, you know, after a while they can try to fool you and start using codes, hey, we'll meet at 43rd and Capitol, it really means 43rd and North. But we do monitor social media, because there's a lot of chatter on uh, social media, especially when there's these rapid deployments of, hey, everybody meet at whatever. Uh, you know, this thing wasn't spontaneous uh, last night. I mean, the, the shooting had happened sometime before. There were four additional homicides that happened from Friday night to Saturday, nine shootings, four murders. Where was the outrage? I looked at the, you have them in here, right? I looked at some of the uh, particulars of that, shootings, robberies. Uh, those lives are valuable too. Okay? And they don't seem to, and I know why, because this other one is police, it's a political construct, and that's not a political construct. But I think it shows the, the uh, phoniness and the contradictory nature of this, this, this ideology. Uh, and I think it's a shame they're exploiting this for some political reason. And 
you know, at some point, I think the public's going to get it. I really do. Uh, they're going to be exposed for what this thing really is. It's a uh, thinly veiled anarchist movement, just trying to incite chaos, uh, threatening institutions we have. The police are a government institution. Uh, we stand on the front lines of ordered liberty. We want to attack ordered liberty and have the chaos you saw last night. You have to attack the police to get through it. So um, this isn't anything new to us. It's not new to me. I went back and studied the 1960s. Newark could have been saved, but for the fact that uh, the police and, and the police, some police officials have admitted they should have taken a st stronger stance earlier in terms of some of the disturbances and riots, and they didn't. They thought soft shoeing it well, you know, to give them space to riot. Didn't work in the 60s. It was one of the lessons learned. Detroit, the same thing. They got many more people killed than needed to be. Um, you have to take a strong stance. It's got to be reasonable. It's got to be measured. But if you don't have the resources in place, it's kind of hard to do that. Do, do you mind saying where you were last night? You said you weren't available last night. And how, yeah, it, how quickly you returned? Yeah, I had, uh, let's put it this way, it was an hour and 45 minutes away. The vacation or, <laughs> or a speaking engagement or what? I, sheriffs don't get vacation. Okay. Sheriffs are always subject to call no matter what they're doing. So you weren't like at the Dells with your family? <coughs> I wasn't at the Dells, no. no. You, even though you weren't here, were you satisfied or dissatisfied with how MPD and your, your agency handled this last night? I was satisfied because there was, uh, like I said, minimal injury, no loss of life. Outside of the, and the police shooting was separate, so, uh, yeah, I'm satisfied. These are very dynamic situations, and uh, I think under the circumstances, all of law enforcement, and you had some help from Waukesha. I mean, this was an all-hands-on-deck last night, and that's what those are. And yeah, I'm, I'm pleased, but, you know, three businesses are burned. Uh, you got a community on edge now, and it's got to be managed. Do you think there should be a curfew? I asked the mayor about that as part of my discussion. I said, is there any, is there some line at which you would uh, impose a curfew? And, and he said he wasn't sure. Could is, you? Yeah, I mean, these are assessments you see what happens tonight. Um, that's his call. But I did bring that up. Like I said, I. Tactically, I know what I'm doing, and I know what questions to ask. I know what levers to pull to make sure that people in the field have what they need. And uh, some of those things that you're talking, you know, with curfews, that comes down the line, and that's that's quality mix. Was the mayor was the mayor upset that you had called out the National Guard already, or made a request for the National no, Guard? No, he was very uh, congenial. Great conversation. You got to put all that stuff aside. At least I know that. You put all that stuff aside at a time like this. And uh, he was grateful for the call. He said that several times. I really appreciate you calling. Uh, he knows what our participation was last night. He thanked us, and not that he has to. It, it was a great, it was a good phone call. It, at times like this, you, I could put all that stuff aside. Did, Did you, you impose a curfew on the county? I'd have to research that. I, I, I'd have to research that. You know, you wouldn't want to put one on the entire county anyway. I mean, not under these circumstances. It's, uh, you may, that assessment is hard because you don't need to put the entire city under a curfew unless it's like Baltimore. The whole damn city uh, is upside down. But sometimes you can, you can zone off. You can say from 60th to 27th here to here, curfew means no vehicles move through, you block it off, no people on the street, other than emergency vehicles or if somebody's to and from work, you had to get to move. Um, but then other than that, you don't want anybody else in that perimeter, but then you got to guard that perimeter. Otherwise, traffic's still going to come through, people are going to walk around. So that's an additional uh, variable in terms of now how are we going to police that curfewed off area, but I don't see at this point any need today to put the entire city in. That would, that would be a little too much. If there was a curfew, would be I live in the city, by the way. I don't want to put another curfew. If you impose a curfew, do you think you would need the National Guard at that point? 
I don't know. That's you know that calls for speculation, and I, I try to avoid that sort of thing. Have you or anyone in your department watched the body cam video? I did. Uh, Mayor and I discussed it, but I didn't watch it. Do you fear nightfall tonight? No, no, no. I only fear God. Do you think that body cam video should be released quickly so as to <coughs> prove what the police are saying that they were right in this action? Yeah, you know that's a judgment call. I want to leave that to them because, you know, it can. Uh, got to be careful what I say and stuff like that. I'll be the headline. Sarah calls for release mm -hmm. of the body cam, and uh, that's a decision they have to make. If it helps them, I, I would if it helped. If it hurts, oh man. I don't know. See, it's a, it's, a, it's a judgment call. But I'm aware of some other information about it that I'm not going to release. It's for them to release. And uh, these things are tragic situations. Every time an officer has to use force, no officer wants to do it. It is a last resort. And. Uh, the actions of the perp matter here are important. Uh, he was armed. And not just because you're not armed, because I always say unarmed does not mean not dangerous. But this would appear to be, appear, I don't know all the facts. You know, the, these cop haters can't say police shoot unarmed man. So you look at a lot of things, and, and this guy didn't deserve to die. But he's a co-actor in his own demise. Some people can't stomach that. Well, that sounds cruel. But it's the truth. You get out of a car with a handgun in your hand when you confront the police, bad things are going to happen. Not through any fault of the officer. The officer is not required. And I never want officers to get to a state where they have to let the perpetrator make the first move. They have to get shot at or have the gun pointed at them. A gun in the hand down here to a cop it's very quick from here to here. This is deadly. But people would say on the body, well, he didn't have the gun raised. So what? It only takes a second to do this. The cops should not have to wait to take the fire first. Right? The rule of law. Supreme Court decisions govern this stuff, the use of force and not. That's why I said people got to use the process, got to trust the process. You may not like the outcome. But it's what we have in, in uh Democratic state of ordered liberty. You, you, you didn't finish your sentence. You said you were aware of additional information that you wouldn't disclose that what? That justified? Oh, uh, that are involved here. No, that are involved here. I don't have all the facts, but uh, the mayor shared some things with me. I'm not going to disclose that. Uh, people give me information, they can trust me. With me. Okay? All right, thanks a lot, folks.